What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be doing a two round mock draft with trades. It's going to be split up into two different days, round one today, round two tomorrow. So stay tuned. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe if you guys do enjoy. Leave your comments down below. Remember, don't be a dick about it. I want to hear your feedback and I want to make sure that my content is good as possible because if I'm slipping up, you guys letting me know, make sure I don't do it over and over again. And the goal of this is to make sure that I can give you all the best content because you know, I don't want to waste my time either. I don't want to waste your time. So let's get this going. Of course, please feel free to just let me know anything. There's other links down in the description. Yes, I want to make this the best channel possible. Let's get to 8K. We just breached 7,700 yesterday, which is awesome. But yes, let's get right into this. And um, this is all live for those of y'all who are new. So I have not already thought out the trades. I just think it's more fun that you guys get to see my thought process. And it's a little bit more original. A lot of people have these mock drafts they've already drafted, and then they just go through and pick them again. But we're going to, of course, blend this with realism. Uh, I really do love the idea of going Bryce Young number one, mainly because it also sets up the Texans to be able to get like JSN at 12. To me, I think that's a super cool idea. It doesn't even matter for that, though. I think Bryce Young is starting to become more of the favorited option, and it's a nice thing to see. You know, he arguably weighs, I think he weighs like nine pounds less than CJ. And so we're not even talking about, we're just talking about pure height as an issue. And when it comes to guys like Kyler, um, it's more of the injuries. I don't think it comes solely from his height. It just is his play style. I think Bryce Young has a more survivable play style in the NFL. He's very elusive. He's very smart as to when he takes hits. So for me, I am going to go Bryce Young. It's also a new fresh uh, breath of fresh air because so many people are taking CJ. That is just, I don't know. I enjoy it. I really do. And at this number two pick, there's a lot of valid arguments here as to why not to go CJ Stroud. And that's mainly because of the fact that same agent as Deshaun Watson. He looks up to Deshaun Watson and, you know, that could play a role. But I just don't think that's a big factor. There are guys who have already signed with the Texans from that same agency. So I don't really think there's bad blood with the agency because at the end of the day, they're in it for the money. And so are the players. I think this is a whole entire new regime that's going to be moving in. And D'Amico Ryan is going to be able to set a good precedent for the organization. I think CJ Stroud's a perfectly fine selection for him. Pick number three for the Cardinals. I am going to do a trade here. Uh, I thought about doing a trade before, uh, but we are definitely going to be doing a trade this time. So yeah, at this pick, we definitely need to get one of these QBs off the board. The issue is that apparently some teams have, you know, Head and Hooker as their number three quarterback. I highly doubt that. I think that's a bunch of smoke and a bunch of BS. I like Hendon Hooker and he's my QB five. I think the margin is less than, you know, maybe the drafts, including my own suggest, but he's an older quarterback who had an injury to his primary asset, which is his legs. That to me lowers his value, but you still look at guys like Will Levis. I think he can command an NFL offense. I think he'll be perfectly fine. I think you'll have the best day one impact out of the two here. But Anthony Richardson has shown to me in the offseason the ability and the desire to work on his mechanics. And he wouldn't have come out if he didn't truly believe. If he was supposed to be a second round pick or a later first, I can guarantee you he would not have come out. He he knew. He could have easily went back to Florida, shown the crazy tools once again, and there's only two really elite quarterbacks in next year's class that we really know are going to be game changers. And that's May as well as Caleb Williams. So he could have definitely solidified himself as a pretty strong QB three. He wouldn't have come out in this class if he didn't think he could do the same. So I think at this spot, some teams are going to be trying to move up. And it's just up to the organization as to whether do we have time or do we not? And I'm looking at the Raiders here. They're an organization that has time. They're bringing on really good veterans to potentially mold a franchise quarterback. And if you look at the contracts, like Jimmy G's, 20 something million a year used to be roughly starter amount. That's not even remotely close anymore. And Jimmy G's brought in, we all know he has a, a fairly high degree of fragility to him. And it could definitely be a team that trades up for Anthony. I've heard rumors that the Falcons might move up for Anthony, but with Devon Witherspoon testing really well, I highly doubt like there's a lot of other positions that they can target and get great value there. The Titans are just the team I'm going to continue coming back to. They are not happy with their situation and it gives you the option to get future first from a team that very well could end up being really crippled this year. 
And I'm sorry to say that to Titans fans. You guys have made some good moves in the offseason. You got like Andre Dillard on the squad. That's that's a good addition. But you guys don't have the QB in place. It's pretty obvious you guys have lost all faith in Tannehill. And Malik just doesn't look like he's going to fit exactly what you're looking for. And you can work with the tools of Anthony Richardson, or you can go with the upside of Will Levis. And um, I'm going to be negotiating that trade. If I am the uh, Cardinals, I'm trading with a team out of the top 10 so I can get those future first round picks. And to me, I think that's just the best thing that you can do. Finding where the hell the Titans are. Uh, we are going to be trading a third round pick. I don't think the Titans are going to want to part ways with their second, but they are going to be actually negotiating a trade similar to this. It's not going to affect the mock draft. So feel free to play around if you want to toss in a future second. If you don't, if you think it's too much, feel free to let me know. Uh, but they are going to be moving up for this selection. We're forcing the trade. And here's the reason why that I'm also doing this. They made an offer for the number one pick. It's obvious they're trying to reset. They just brought on Jeffrey Simmons for that four-year contract, which is awesome. So happy to see that they're not totally breaking down everything that's good on the team. It shows that they now have an identity on the defense. You can't really afford to continue paying a franchise quarterback, Derrick Henry, as well as Jeffrey Simmons, that super high cap amount forever, because there's other guys who you need to feed. Uh, that's why you're trying to take money from Kevin Byard and stuff like that. So I think this is the right move in terms of realism. Uh, and I think it's the right move for Arizona, especially. Now, looking at it, Anthony Richardson or Will Levis, I believe that this new organization wants a direction. And the most success that the Titans have had has been with someone who's like Will Levis. He's, again, one of those guys who's going to have that day one impact. I don't think that Ryan Tannehill is the future, but I think that Will Levis has pretty much everything Ryan Tannehill has and more. And that has shown to be able to bring you guys to the playoffs. And I think he's going to have a better performance in the NFL than in college. And he's played behind subpar offensive lines with mediocre weapons. And you guys have better weapons and a better offensive line, in my opinion, than he had there at Kentucky. I think that he's being heavily underrated. And that's coming from me, who I'm not even that big of a fan of Will Levis. Pick number four. Um, it's not really a big negotiating topic. Anthony Richardson's going to be the pick. I don't think they trade for Lamar Jackson. Pick number five, this is where things do not get interesting because if Will Anderson is here, I'm going to take him 10 times out of 10. Sorry, that is the way it is. Pick number six, this is where things get interesting. I think Tyree Wilson's the best option here. Unfortunately, there are no quarterbacks, but you could see a team move up to six. There's a team right here in the Philadelphia Eagles that could be making that move. Jalen Carter could be that final piece, but I have a feeling that they have their eyes set on somebody else. And it's a little bit tough. I might want to see if a team tries to move up for Jalen Carter. You know, there are teams that could be a defensive tackle away. But, like, it would be my goal to trade out of this spot. I mean, Tyree Wilson's on the board. You could see a team that is aggressive try to get someone like Tyree. I just don't see it. I don't. I would try to trade out of here, of course. If Will Levis, Anthony Richardson are here, you're trading out. Hands down. That's what you do. But I just don't think that's going to be the case. I think you got to go with the best player available. I think Tyree Wilson can play across from Aiden Hutchinson and be an absolute monster. He's going to be an amazing compliment to James Houston as well, who's a DPR, designated pass rusher, for those of y'all who have not been introduced to that nomenclature. So for me, I'm going to go Tyree. Excellent in the run game. He is graded very similarly. I'm quoting Brett Coleman here um, to Will Anderson by a lot of teams. Some people think that he might go before Will Anderson. It is possible. So uh, yeah, Will Anderson is, he's an incredible player. Tyree Wilson is going to be definitely one of those guys who's more well-rounded in the fact that he's going to have the bigger frame, the bigger arms, the more versatility, and he's still a great athlete. And if he tested, he would have been absolutely phenomenal. And I know I think he had a foot issue. That's why he hasn't been able to participate in the off season, which really sucks. But I do think if he did that, he would be pushing for that number three spot pretty heavily because he had a lot of of really good tape and he showed a lot of room for improvement and that's great because you've seen production and you see upside that's usually what projects into a really good player and I think Tyree Wilson doesn't have any personality constraints to me uh or concerns to me that's a very solid selection because Jalen Carter I know a lot of Lions fans are gonna say oh Jalen Carter I still think that um there are concerns nonetheless and his talent might be blue chip 
but you don't look at just the on-field talent when you're evaluating a player. I just can't see Dan Campbell falling in love with the personality of Jalen Carter with um, not being able to complete his off-season drills. I went into this ad nauseum, so don't need to really talk too much about Jalen Carter. I just don't think that they are a system fit and, um, you know, from the people I've heard in the Lions building, that is, uh, that's the word. So at pick number seven, they apparently scratched Jalen Carter off their board, brought him in for a top 30 visit. Those are very valuable. You have 30 players that you can talk to. You end up drafting, well, I have no idea. I think you guys probably have like six or seven picks, maybe a little bit more um, in this draft. So you got, you got a lot more than seven. You got like 11 picks. So that makes it even more of a valid argument. So you have like 11 picks in this draft. You're going to spend one of those 30 on a guy who crossed off your board. Sounds like smoke to me. So I think this organization organization still willing to work with Jalen Carter. Yes, there are the concerns with what happened to Henry Ruggs. But this is a new regime coming in with McDaniels. And McDaniels comes from a team that drafted Christian Barmore with uh, which he had issues in terms of his personality. And that's coming from an inside source in the NFL that I know. So like I know for a fact that's the reason Christian Barmore fell. He was uncoachable and he was stubborn. I think Jalen Carter's coachable, might be a little bit lazy, but I think this might this might be the system to make it work. So uh, Jalen Carter is going to be that selection. Pick number eight for the Falcons. I am just going to continue rocking it. Devon Witherspoon, uh, you know, he tested very well. It appears he's probably going to be the first corner off the board. Dave Huxtable worked with his defensive coordinator last year. It just makes sense. Pick number nine for the Bears. Uh, man, it kind of sucks to be the Bears right now because there's just not a player worth trading up for because I would love to trade back and then end up getting a star offensive tackle. That's just not going to happen. And I know we need that defensive front help. I would not be surprised if they go defensive line with this pick. But I think that defensive line is more plentiful than offensive line. So I'm just I'm just keeping it as is. This is just a standard way the draft has gone for me recently. And it's the way it's going to continue to go. Pick number 10 for the Eagles. Uh, I talk about this. You need to find the biggest needle mover. This team's signing a lot of one-year deals. What does that entail? You're bringing back your veterans, your stars that brought you to the Super Bowl. You're trying to win now. So who's the guy who's going to make the biggest difference year one? You're not looking for who's the best player for your team in the long run. You're looking for who's helping me win right now. And Bijan might be the best for your team in the long run too, but he's also the guy who can make you win now. So I think this is the most likely selection. And honestly, I don't think it's a bad selection whatsoever. Bijan is one of those dudes who is going to have that gold jacket mentality coming into the league. People see a guy who's a legitimate Hall of Famer. That's a pretty damn big asset to have on your team. Running backs have increased in value once again. Hallelujah. They finally aren't just like dudes you have for two years and then, you know, kick to the curb. But Bijan is going to be somebody who could be on a franchise for 10, 15 years. So definitely something that's worth investing at 10, especially since you guys aren't a team that actually earned the number 10 pick. You have been able to snag it from New Orleans. Pick number 11. So we traded back, doing a great job. I am going to select a corner here. Christian Gonzalez would be awesome, but I think the best system fit um, with Gannon is Joey Porter Jr., he has crazy measurables, obviously like one of the biggest wingspans out of the corner class, if not the biggest, and then tested in the four fours, crazy good impress, my number two player in the class. We'll scroll down a little bit now so you guys get to see a little bit more of my board. But at number 12, um, again, I talked about it, I hinted at it earlier. I just think it's such a cool combination to go, Jack Smith and Jigba and CJ Stroud. You could trade back and still get them probably because there's some really good players in this class but I just think the value is kind of too good to pass on. For the Jets, I think you need to get a bona fide offensive tackle. You could trade back if you guys are trading your seconds for Aaron Rodgers and then end up getting second round picks. I actually want to try that. I've always done the same exact thing over and over again, and you guys deserve some brand new content. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Christian Gonzalez is here, and I am seeing a team in the Patriots that could be a very, very good landing spot for him. So... I could see a team like the Lions being aggressive and then moving up for a star corner because I'm seeing two teams in front of them that are waiting to snag one. But at the same time, this team is looking for a wide receiver one. 
And I think that's, again, one of those needle movers. I have a strong faith that the Lions could make it to the Super Bowl if they hit this draft correctly. So I'm not going to press the buttons on that one. But teams that could be looking for a star corner, the Ravens. They really could be. They're not in a very good position. I had my last draft with them. They're sitting there and they got Tyreek uh, Stevenson. And I like Tyreek Stevenson. But it's a big drop off from guys like Christian Gonzalez, Deontay Banks. And um, well, those are the primary two guys that I'm talking about. Like these guys, there's a huge drop off. And you could even see it on PFF's board. It's a big drop off. So for me, I'm going to make a move up here. Because I think the Jets, if you move back to this spot, you still can get a star tackle. And that to me is very valuable. You can end up um, getting your picks in return. And I think the Baltimore Ravens need to be aggressive in this. Um, They don't, oh, I said they were going to get their second round picks in return. They don't even have fucking second round picks. So RIP to that idea. But you still can accrue extra picks because you also ended up losing your third round pick. So um, we're going to actually end up doing a 2-3-2 to move up. And I believe this is very similar value to the Steelers. So Sorry, Jets fans. I was hoping to try to squeeze out a second rounder for you, but I kind of forgot. Yeah, the Ravens, you need to address a primary concern, and that is a corner two spot. Um, And the Jets are going to be trading back this pick. We are going to be moving up with this, making sure I selected 22. And the Baltimore Ravens have moved up for a star corner in Christian Gonzalez. They could end up uh, going with the homegrown talent of Deontay Banks, but... I just want to change it up a little bit. Christian Gonzalez, he tested out great. Uh, great, Same thing with Deontay. Doesn't really matter. Pick number 14. Um, well, at this spot, I could even see another corner in Deontay Banks going. Like It could have been corner, corner, corner. And I like the corners in this class. I think there's a legitimate drop-off after a certain point. Like There's a significant drop-off between these guys who I think could be corner ones versus the guys who are fringe ones. And then there are guys who are bona fide twos. And um, there's a very small list of guys who are French ones. I'll put it that way. So I think this team could be looking for someone like Darnell Wright, developmental offensive tackle, senior bowl guy. I think that would be a very smart move. You could go to Georgia and get Broderick Jones, but um, I'm oh, I'm stuck here. I think we could see Deontay Banks go this early. And I feel like Bill might be the type of guy to fall in love with a big prospect, six foot, 200 pounds, and crazy athlete. Uh, I'm going to test this out. We'll see how it goes. Pick number 15 with the Packers. Uh, Peter Skronsky fits so well, but I'm going to pass on that. And we are going to be going after Miles Murphy, who ended up testing arguably just as well as Travon Walker. Pick number 16 for Washington. I'm going to go Peter Skronsky to play interior offensive line for you. I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. Pick number 20 for the Steelers. And we're seeing Quentin Johnston fall again, but... I actually kind of screwed my Steelers over apart from Darnell Wright. I love Darnell Wright. I'm going to make the selection, but it's not going to make that day one impact because Chakuma's there under a couple years, a uh, couple year deal and Dan Moore. That being said, I would love for Darnell to actually kick one of their asses out of their spot. So great selection for the Steelers. Nonetheless, pick number 18 for the Lions. We're going to go Quentin Johnston here because DJ Char has gone. You don't have a big receiver there. You kind of need one. And if he gets over his issues with going out and getting the ball. He has that Chase Claypool bring it into you rather than go out and get it. Um, Then he's going to be a great wide receiver. Chase hasn't been able to do that since he got in the NFL. I feel like Quentin could. So uh, yeah, obviously some people say that they don't like that idea, but you know, I think that you'll end up getting a much better prospect than Chase Claypool. Pick number 19. Now you could end up going after a developmental prospect like Lucas Van Ness. I don't think that'd be a bad idea. So it could be the right thing to do. I think edge rusher with Nolan Smith would be really fun. Levante David's going to be gone, and Nolan Smith's honestly not too shabby in coverage too. So it might be the best thing for the team. Uh, You might see Hendon Hooker being an option here, but I wouldn't do it. (laughs) I'm just going to be honest. I wouldn't do it. I think Brian Branch could be a good selection here, though. Uh, Sean Murphy Bunting's gone. I would love to see Brian Branch paired up in that backfield there with Antoine Winfield. So we're going to test it out. Let me know what you guys think about that. Pick number 20. So you got Will Anderson. Kalijah could be a really fun option for you as well. We still have guys like Anton Harrison, Broderick Jones on the board. So it's looking pretty good for the Jets. And um, this could be a great spot to move back. It really could. 
I wish Paris Johnson were available because he said he'd play guard. So I could just say, hey, we'll stick him into guard for you guys. But, um, you know, for the Seahawks, man, it's tough. It's tough to draft for you guys at this spot because I can't draft Nolan Smith anymore. You just drafted an edge rusher. That's why I wish, I pray that Jalen Carter could be on your guys' board. But we didn't end up going after that. So um, I think I might make the move back here. Question is, who's moving up for who? And I think the offensive tackles are the guys worth moving up for. I see three tackles left. I see one, um, two, three, four, five teams needing one. And um, you got to be aggressive. And I think the Chiefs might be aggressive for Dewan Jones, but not this high. I think they can wait a little bit to get someone like Dewan Jones or Anton. I think Broderick Jones is going to be the hot commodity. And um, I could see the Bengals trying to move up for him. I mean, hell, there's so many teams that need a tackle. Um, I'm actually going to make the move up with the Chiefs. Yeah, it's going to be in Kansas City. They're going to make a splash. So uh, Kansas City is going to make the move up here. I think it's going to require um, two third round future picks. I don't think they're going to give up their second. It's just tough to think about that. And also, if I'm Seattle, I don't really want a second round pick this year. I already have multiple. So we are going to force this trade through. Kansas City trades up in their own draft, which I believe they did last year as well for uh, Trent McDuffie. And they are going to end up going Anton Harrison here. You know, you can have him as a right tackle or a left. Anton is a beast. Uh, I said that you're going to move up for Broderick Jones, but I actually have Anton much higher. So he also has that versatility. I think that'll be very coveted. Then he would be the guy I'd trade up for if I am potentially looking at a right tackle as well. Pick number 21 for the Chargers. I, at this point, I think that Dalton Kincaid might be the best choice. Uh, corners, I you know, you do have some dudes here like Tyree Stevenson, but it's just too early for me. It is. Uh, wide receiver wise, Zay Flowers could be a great choice, but at the same time, I could have Tank Dell in round two. I just think that's a little bit better value. Tight end wise, you could end up with a super stud in round two and like Luke Musgrave, but just like last draft, I was scraping the barrel. I was praying to God that Luke would fall. So I actually kind of want to get the best choice here. And we've seen that one Gerald Everett ain't good enough, but two, Kellen Moore loves his tight ends. So Dalton Kincaid is going to be my selection here. Now, um, this is going to be Broderick Jones. Trade it back and still got the guy I'd probably take at that spot. So good job for the Jets. Uh, pick number 23 for the Vikings. Kalijah is still here. Lucas might be the choice that I would make for them. Um, but wide receivers here and Zay Flowers could be the guy who some people think is a wide receiver one in this class. He deserves to be taken pretty highly. So I'm going to give him that respect. Pick number 24. Uh, I could see this team developing Dewan Jones and just absolutely screwing over the rest of the AFC. That might be the move I make because finally you guys get to see other picks and tackles for the rest of them. That might be the way I go. And uh, I'm keeping Walker Little at guard. We're going to be at taking DeWand and Jones here. You're also disarming your future competition in the playoffs. Pick number 25 for the uh, Giants. I think, man, if I'm looking at spots for him, tight end is not an awful one. Wide receiver is obviously apparent. Uh, they say center. It's too early for a center. You can get one in the next round because I can guarantee you Luke Whipler is probably going to be there in the real draft linebacker you guys have invested enough in it if brian branch were here that'd be a great julian love replacement uh corner again i was talking about it's like i have a little bit of a a little bit of an issue with the corners on the board so i am going to go after jordan addison i know you guys have some dudes there for sure but jordan addison is going to be just such a good option could add this dealer's trade up for him but at the same time you know i think that the best pick for the giants would be jordan addison so i wouldn't trade out of a pick that i think is a very good fit Sorry, Steelers fans, including myself. That would have been a great pick. Pick number 26 for the Cowboys. Um, the Cowboys are also a team that I could totally see trying to disarm their competition like Kalijah Kansi to the Eagles, but that just might lead them to take Brian Breezy. It is what it is. Um, for the Cowboys, offensive line, still a position I like to look at. We just took all of them, so RIP to that idea. Uh, running back, nobody is good enough. I mean, Jameer Gibbs could be an option, but you literally have Tony Pollard. I'd wait till next round for Zach Charbonnet. Uh, tight end, like Mayer, everybody's saying Mayer could be the Jason Witten. That's a very good idea. 
I don't really think the guys you have on roster right now are necessarily elite starters. And this is an offense that has Brandon Cooks on it, it has CD Lamb, it has Tony Pollard. You need more of a security blanket, and I think Michael Mayer could be that option. People are saying three tight ends might go in the first round. I'm going to try to make that a little bit more likely. Michael Mayer, he's also a great blocker, so it helps out with um, a developing offensive line. Pick number 27 uh, might be going Lucas Van Ness here. That might just be the pick just because of the fact that um, he's going to be, I mean, he might even be taken next. It's tough for the Bills, but you know what? We're going after the best pick. You lost Tremaine Edmonds. I'm sticking to it. I love this fit. Jack Campbell. I think he should go as high as 17. He's an amazing player. I'll scroll down so you guys can see a little bit more of my board too. Jack Campbell fits exactly the role Tremaine does. He's an amazing zone coverage linebacker. 6'5", 250. One of the few guys in the class actually has the size, but he also has the athleticism. I think he had a 9.9 RAS. So you know that he's very athletic, especially for his size. Pick number 28 for the Bengals. Could see them trading out of this spot. I don't really like the tight ends that are available. Could go defensive interior. Like Brian Breezy wouldn't be a bad guy to bring onto the roster. Defensive backs, I mean, I just like Julius Brents in your zone coverage system in round two. So I'd prefer that over going anybody else at the moment. Uh, but if I do move back, I am potentially missing out on some uh, really good talent. Please let me know if you guys think that defensive interior is that big of a need. Because I can't take any of these tight ends here. I really can't, but let's see who is on the board. You do have Breezy, uh, Van Ness, Cansey, and I think a team should probably trade up for Van Ness. That team's going to be Houston. Houston's going to trade uh, trade up here because if I'm going to be honest, I just, I can't muster the strength to take a pick for the Bengals, and I'm sorry for you Bengals fans, but um, it's going to give a, you guys a third round pick. It probably ends up taking a fourth in reality, but um, not going to affect this mock draft, so Maybe we'll just toss that in for the Texans fans to feel happy about. Uh, They are going to end up moving up and taking Lucas Van Ness. I think that's a super solid option. You give D'Amico Ryans his defensive weapon, and you're kind of copying the Jets by being able to get three first-round picks, including more of a raw edge rusher. Pick number 29, that kind of forces the hand here. It's Kalijah or Brian, and I think Brian Breezy is going to be the choice. I love freaking Nolan Smith with all my heart. He's going to be the selection here. It was not my intention to drop him, but I know there's other defensive interiors later on. You just, you can't mess that up. And at pick number 31, you know what? I can honestly just get Kalijah here and be happy. I know you guys are looking for that nose tackle and that sucks because I really just want to go Mozzie Smith, but I can't let Kalijah freaking be here. Kalijah needs to go round one. Him or Otto Bawari need to go round one. Like, can I see a team moving up for Kalijah? Maybe. Like, other teams that could move up for a defensive interior? Ooh, that's actually not looking too good for you guys. So, uh, in terms of a trade back, I don't really see many teams really liking Kalijah that much. And I don't think anybody else is really worth it. Mozzie Smith might be the guy who gets taken ahead of him. That's just the size thing. He has like 300. Uh, he moved up my board too. He's a very impressive defensive interior. And I think that you guys are going to go after that. I know it's weird to pass and just let Cansey fall out of the first. It feels really weird, but good players fall. That's the way it is. And don't call me a Steelers homer because I mean, I'd prefer Mozzie Smith over Kalija for us. So that's going to be the video. I know is insane. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.